today I'm gonna to show you how to use a secret menu to grow curiosity, exclusivity, and most importantly, your sales. Okay, how you doing? It's Dave Allred, The Real Barman here from barpatrol.net and therealbarman.com. So I love this idea of a secret menu. And I'm sure you've seen or heard about them, especially at fast food restaurants like In-N-Out with its animal style burger and Starbucks with its Harry Potter inspired butter beer frappuccino. Okay, but I love the idea of doing a secret menu at more traditional restaurants because you just don't see it done. All right, which is why I've used this strategy with some of the restaurants I've worked with personally. Okay, so why is a secret menu so freaking cool? Well, first off, people love the idea of being exclusive. Okay, they want to feel significant and special, and they love knowing a secret that nobody else knows. But more importantly, they love sharing the secret with others to demonstrate to everyone that they know something that they don't know to prove how far more significant and special they are for having found the treasure first. All right, and I know that sounds ridiculous, but it's 100% true. All right, people can't wait to share something they know with others. They simply can't hold it in. All right, so what you're doing in effect is creating a word of mouth campaign by providing forbidden knowledge of a secret menu. All right, this strategy is used at a bar in San Francisco near where I live called Bourbon and Branch. This is a speakeasy that has no signage and you have to get onto their website and search around in order to find the password in, in order to get in. All right, and people talk about it all over the place. They're like, how do you get into Bourbon and Branch? And the people who know can't wait to tell them. All right, and then inside the bar, they have several different rooms and secret e exits, and they have like revolving bookcases. The whole thing is very Scooby-Doo, and the secret part creates a, uh, creates a buzz that you would not believe. All right, so you get the point. Secrets plus exclusiveness equals blabbermouth sharing it with the world how, how important they are for knowing this inside information. Does that make sense? All right, now, not only is a secret menu fun, but it is extremely cost-effective because one, your guests are doing most of the campaign for you, and two, you can simply use ingredients that you already have to create these special dishes. Okay, so now that you understand the effectiveness of a secret menu campaign, how in the hell do we get this thing going? Well, first off, you need to come up with some unique menu ideas. That could be for food or drink or both. I wouldn't put too many menus, uh, too many items on the menu, um, or becomes less special. Like two to four food or cocktail items is good, something in that range, or you could just have one item, it's totally up to you. Just don't create like 19 secret menu items. Okay, now historically, menu, uh, many of the secret menu items have come directly from regulars who will add a little like flair to existing menu items. They'll be like, can I put like an over easy egg on my lasagna? Or whatever, so you know you get ideas from your regulars, but I would also have a staff meeting so you can sit down with them and ask them for ideas because they should know every single menu item on the menu, and they often modify these items themselves when they're ordering food on their breaks and after their shifts. All right, this includes obviously speaking with your chef and your bartenders, who are the ones actually creating these items. All right, I had a cocktail back in the day that I called the Braveheart, named after my favorite movie. All right, which included scotch in the cocktail because William Wallace was from Scotland. Hello. Uh, and I would love to tell you what's in it, but yeah, you guessed it. It's a secret. All right, the point is word got around to scotch drinkers in my bar and pretty soon people I had never even seen before were coming up to the bar and saying like, I heard you had make something called a Braveheart and a secret menu item was born. All right, didn't even know it at the time. Uh, I was like the first in and out burger for drunks. All right, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on secret menu dish ideas. Uh, you'll have to come up with those on your own, but make them unique and make them yummy. All right, next you're going to need to name your secret menu items something different and memorable. All right, the items on your menu probably already have uh, exactly what they are, like chicken nachos and barbecue bacon burger, French dip sandwich, which is fine. All right, but your secret menu item should be something off the beaten path, like suicide nachos and maybe they have like five different kinds of meat and four different kinds of cheeses and a half pound of guacamole and sour cream and I don't know like a turkey leg on top uh you know but that's memorable or like a black widow burger you could put french fries on it I used to do that all the time with my burgers back in high school uh and then it has maybe some special secret sauce on there all right or you could do a different take on the french dip and call it the napoleon all right he was that french guy if you remember uh, White Castle, the notorious fast food burger chain, has a secret menu item called the Surf and Turf Sliders, which is a hamburger patty and a piece of fried fish with melted cheese. Yeah, it's not my vibe, but it's certainly unique. All right, anyway, you get the idea. So unique items 
unique names. Next is how do we get the word out? All right, we want to be exclusive and secretive, but not so exclusive and secretive that nobody knows about it. That would just be plain silly. All right, well, the easiest way to do this is to have your bartenders and servers let it slip to some of the regulars so they can try it out. Then when the dish comes out and others see it, they'll start asking about it. All right, this is effective to a point, and it's the easiest way to do it, but it's also a bit boring. And I like more of a cloak and dagger approach to add some excitement and, tr and intrigue to it, like the Born Identity movies. Jesus Christ. That's Jason Bourne. So here are some of my ideas I've used with the restaurants I've worked with that have been highly successful. Number one, put the secret menu items on a secret page on your website. And you want to make it look like a regular menu, the actual page, complete with a picture of the item and a description. And if you have like three or four items on there, it's great. All right. Then you're going to put a not so easy to find link on your website. And I like to put it at the bottom of the page, like in the footer section where you have like contact and all that, um, where you have all the different links. Just casually slip it in there. Or you could put it on another not so obvious place. That's up to you. Then you still have your staff let it slip that they have, uh, that they have this secret menu on your website and that they should go look around. It's like a treasure hunt, all right, for food and drink revelry. Uh, most people will jump on their phones right then to go find it. But here's my favorite way I came up with this recently, and it has worked very amazingly, awesomely well. And that's a lot of adverbs right in a row there. But you need uh, your staff to let it slip that you have a secret menu. And if guests want to access it, they need to sign up for your email list, and then they will be emailed the password immediately. All right, they then give the password to a staff member, and they are then given a little sheet of paper with a QR code that brings up the secret menu. How freaking cool is that? I was fired up when I found that. Uh, Want to take it up a notch from there? Well, when they get that first email, the password is a scrambled word that they have to unscramble before they can get the password. So the password might be, I don't know, like nachos. But in the email, it's scrambled, so it's like O-H-A-S-N-C or something. Did I get all the letters? And then they have to unscramble it first. And this is so unique that people will be scampering from your restaurant to go out into the world so they can tell everyone they see for the next week how cool your place is. All right, but more importantly, with this last strategy, you now have their email, email address so you can market to them for free. Because if you aren't doing email marketing for your restaurant, you are missing out on possibly the number one most cost-effective and simply effective ways to market your restaurant. Okay, so... I just gave you a whole lot to think about there. Uh, you can see when you start brainstorming, you can come up with some compelling ways to get people excited about the secret menu, which in turn gets them excited about your restaurant. Remember, our number one strategy at all times, I've said this in many videos, is to get people to come back again and again to your restaurant, to create regulars, so you don't have to spend money to market to new customers. This is the path to success. Okay, and then before we leave for my final strategy for creating enthusiastic regulars via the secret menu is to use scarcity. Okay, scarcity is one of the most powerful marketing tactics around and makes people want whatever it is you're selling more than they would normally want it. Okay, this is econ supply and demand 101. When something is low on supply, the demand goes up. All right, think about it. You've never wanted something so bad as when someone tells you that you can't have it. All right, it's not that the thing itself is so great, but the fact that they tell you that it's only available for a limited time or that you can't have it can't have it at all unless you have some sort of in makes you want it all that much more. So with the secret menu, you could make it only available on Wednesday nights from 6 to 9 o'clock or it's only available for that certain month. Or better yet, you could have a secret menu every month so that people are anticipating it and can't wait to see what's on it. And that means you'd have to keep on changing up the menu, but the good news is you would only have to do like two or three menu items at a time, so it's not an entire menu that you have to plan. Okay, and then most importantly, stick to the scarcity plan. Okay, if suicide nachos are on the menu in May and now it's June and they're off the menu, off the secret menu, if someone orders it, say, sorry, but we're not serving those anymore. That was a May special. Okay, now you don't have to do that. I mean, after all, they could be like, okay, well, then I'll take the nachos, and then they name everything on the suicide nachos, okay, on the side. All right, but most likely, they're not going to remember exactly how it was made or everything on it, so that would be difficult for them. But the point is, to use scarcity, you have to follow through when the item is available or it's not available, or it's not actually going to be scarce, and then it loses its magic and intrigue. Does that make sense? Okay, so... 
I hope this has inspired you a bit. All right, when you use your imaginations, there's an infinite amount of ways for you to stand out and get people excited and talking about your restaurant. And I have found this strategy to be one of the most fun ways to do that for both your guests and for your staff. Okay, so thanks for hanging out with me today. I do appreciate it. I'm going to see you next time. I'm out.